Good day. My name is Jim Leahy, Poopus Tizer of the Friendly Sale Trailer Park. At your service. And with another episode of AFMA. Ask fucking me. AMFA. Ask me fucking anything. You know, just to see if we're in syncopation, I'm just going to cut a card and I'm going to show you the card and I'm going to try to tell you what it me is. Okay? There. That could be three of diamonds. No. But it was close. Anyway, today it's very, very special to actually have a sippy pool in your honor. Ah, how you doing? Okay. Brandon Mintz. Has Jim ever tried LSD, LSD before? Jimmy tried LSD before and it was awful because that was the day that the cows got out of the pasture. Can you imagine lying down, looking at the ceiling, counting the holes in the ceiling, and then seeing the, the holes in the ceiling become the stars in the sky, and then realizing that the quintexal equinox is vibra vibrating like in syncopation with your fucking, you know, your, your gray matter and your axons, and, and then getting up and then looking out and having this face like this far away through the window going <laughs> I thought I was in Dante's Inferno. That's that's a, a, a reference to a fellow by an Italian guy named Dante. I didn't I didn't know him. I didn't go anyway. That was the only time that I remember that I tried LSD. Maybe uh, somebody put me in a drink once before, too, because I remember it could have been MCD or, or Absinthe and Cannabinol or one of those ones. You know, that um, MDA, what is it called? You know, those fucking, you know, those little mushroom things. You know, they say, no, that's not mine, get that little tick on the top, and then fuck off. Anyway, here's your good health. Sam Relichick. Jim. What's the finest and most expensive liquor you've ever slammed? You know, you're talking about the cost of the aftermath, because sometimes you drink a cheap bottle of liquor and it costs you a lot and damages to your fucking car or whatever. That's now that's when we're getting into the nitty gritty nitty gritty. That's when we're getting into the nitty gritty. But I remember I had a bottle of Remy Martin. I think that's the name of it. 1972, and I drank it by mistake, because I thought it said 1750. It said 175 dollars. That's a fucking thing. But that's another bit. What would I have done with that anyway? Anyway, nothing. Oh yeah, I would have, because that was when Trina's birthday, and I didn't fall in love mind. Chris Spanks, Jim Leahy, tell me about the first time you and Randy met. How it all began between you two. Well, can you imagine is in the middle of the rain, driving by Burger King and seeing a guy outside with a cowboy hat on and, and no shirt? I mean, so I'm, you know, I'm on duty. I, I walk up and I ask him what the hell's going on. And uh, he tells me, he makes up this song and dance story about him working, you know, as a, as a you know, one of those... Uh, those people for football games, what do they call them? What do you call those people when you do the fucking dances, you know, and you go, hey, hey, jiggy, jaggy, he said, never mind. Anyway, I asked him if you want to lift, and uh, he said, sure, and I, you know, I, just, I uh, never mind, but that's how we got together. That's all there is to it. Rob Glassman, Jim, we never hear you listen to any music except the roar of the shit lizards. But if you were to listen to music, especially while shit drunk, what would it be? Man, man, what would the music be? Well, I like uh, Adagio for Strings by Berber. That's real good. That was that piece that you saw in the beginning of that apocalypse and a couple of lips now. I think that Vietnam movie when they were dropping that napalm. 
And then, and another thing I like is Rimsky Korsakov's uh, Shahrazad. Do you know about Shahrazad? Did I ever tell you about Shahrazad? Shahrazad was a beautiful princess, and she heard about the Sultan, and the Sultan was marrying one woman every day and then having her put to death that next night, day and then he would marry another one because he was disappointed in love and so he was taking it out on all women and this beautiful girl and her name was Shahrazad and she heard about this guy and so she went to the court and everybody saw her there and the sultan saw her and the sultan said I want to have that one tomorrow so they dressed her all up and she banged him in the middle of the night and then it was time to you know go to sleep and he said she said to him she said do you want to hear a story and he said all right and she's, so she told him this exciting story about Sinbad the sailor, about the ship and Sinbad heading off on his adventures. And, and then she got him really excited and talked about the storm. And then the big bird called the rock that had this huge boulder was drop, just about to drop it on the ship and all the men and dashed their lives to go. And then she went, oh, I'm tired. I think I'll go to sleep. No, you finished the story, said the Sultan. No. I think I'll go to sleep. You finish the story, or, or, or what? She said, you're going to kill me anyway, <laughs> said the Sultan. But guess what? He didn't kill her the next day because he wanted to hear the end of the story. And that night in bed, he, yep, after he winky-dinky-dinky, she started telling him the story, but she didn't finish with the rock. She went on and she added another story about how exciting the foot went. And the Sultan was so like caught up in it. And then she went, oh, I think I'll tell me. She did it for a thousand and one days. That's called the thousand and one Arabian nights. And they're very exciting. And the music by Rimsky Korkasov goes, Dum 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 and then they have this beautiful violin stuff that goes na 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 it's the most beautiful and I like Sting too and of course I like the Beatles but you know I think when if it wasn't for the Beatles I think that um, the Moody Blues were probably the most famous. They are so, they're all clap so trained, and they make beautiful music, they do. But oh, there's so much music out there that's so good. You know, there's some of this rap, rap clap that's pretty good too, if you can fucking understand it. You know, and rock and roll's cool, but when you have someone going, boom 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 who the fuck needs that? You need to have variety, right? And then you have the guitars. Ever since 1970, 15, to fuck that. You need variety, you need to have a change, right? Things have to flow, and then they you change the motif, and then it goes, you know that is boo that's Rhapsody in Blue by by um what's his name? Not George. Yeah, Gershwin. Gigi, Gorge Gershwin. Here's the Gorge Gershwin. Here's you. That's a good question, Bob. Ryan Foster. Jim. What is your perfect vision for Sunnyvale? Well, I think, you know, I haven't given it a lot of thought, but now that you mention it, how about this? How about they make it a monument? They just sort of close it down, put a big dome over it, and make it a monument as a kind of a, 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 an eclipse in time. Just a little glimpse of, of, of like, it's a time capsule. That's it, a time capsule of the iniquity, the propinquity, the propinquity, and the propensity of people in the early part of the 21st, 21st century. That's what I think we should do. Keep it perfect forever. And then the people from outer space will come and they go, oh, look, there's an example of the people who with the court of King Correcticus came passing by Nathan Orville Hamburger. No, he's, he's you. 
Hubner. Tim, when is it too early to start drinking? You mean the day, time of the day? See, it's all relative. It's never too early. How can it be too early? There's never too early. It depends on what you, it's all contextual. That's all it is. I mean, if you're talking about how, what age you should be before, here's the thing. People nowadays, young people, and they're doing shit like, uh, like, like smoking dope and drinking liquor earlier and earlier, right? But the most powerful time of your brain, the most incredible time is when you're in your early 20s. And if you fuck it up with too much alcohol or too much dope, you, you're slow. Here's the thing. It's not so much, I mean, it destroys brain cells and everything, but what happens is you train your neurons and your neural pathways. Like people will go, that's what your brain gets good at. You get hooked into this. You know, the body is a fucking electrical system. You got your parasympathetic nervous system going down one side of your cerebral products, and you got your sympathetic nervous system, and they're both charged. One's positive, one's left. You know when the male sperm hits the female sperm? There's a little spark. There's a little fucking spark. When the, and if there's no spark, there's no life. And that's the thing. We're electrical. And when we learn stuff like this, or we're watching the book, that's what we fucking get good at. And, and we're taking all that space and all that potential. See, imagination. That's what it is. It's a fucking imagination. You got to be able to imagine the future. Here's the thing. I'm 69 years old. A lot of people think they get 60 years old. They got to be fucking, that's it. Or 55, freedom 55. Fuck that. I'm telling you, 60, 60s are your most part of your life. You, because you don't worry so much. Your cock doesn't lead you around anymore. And you don't have to spend 95% of your time trying to get laid every fucking day. You want to do is you think you just think, plan things. That, here's the thing. You just figure out what it is you want to be doing when you're in your 60s. And then you make it happen slowly but surely more slowly than anything else because everything comes to she who waits as long as she works like hell while she's waiting. You got that? Mm -hmm.